Rocket Museum down there in Huntsville, Alabama. And if you ever get a chance to stop down there, stop into the Rocket Museum and you'll see the Saturn V, how big it is, all the artifacts and stuff that the space program used back then. And you'll be able to see a, a show in their uh, planetarium down there, which is an awesome place to see. So I highly recommend that uh, visit to you. But I decided to get a couple souvenirs. One was, of course, a coffee cup, which I, I bought. But this one is very special. I got my NASA cards. And these are my special playing cards. I do not play cards with anybody with these cards. Why? Well, you know, someone might get mad, tear them up, they lose, or they might, you know, bend the corners or not take care of these cards and being, you know, careful with them and make me an unhappy camper. But so these are my souvenir cards that I can look at the pictures from time to time to see, remember what the space program is like. So, for example, Here's the first card uh, that is uh, on the Discovery launch. Many of these cards have the space pictures on them. As you can see there, there's the space shuttle. And it's a beautiful picture, all, all, all colorful and everything. And so these, this, I decided to get this for a souvenir. The next one is uh, the space shuttle Atlantis uh, on top of a uh, crawler transporter. Now this would be a sight to watch just to see just to see NASA uh, moving their space vehicles down very slowly to their launch pad on the day of their launch. How many of us remember the space program back in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s? Well you had Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. And uh, some of those older folks out there remember all those space pro programs. Now these are the space shuttles that the younger generation has, has to grow up with. This one here is Space Shuttle Atlantis on launch pad 39A. See, they're very colorful um, photos here. And when I was in fifth grade, I was also uh, in the space program and astronomy. And how many of us remember those small model rocket rockets we used to put together from Estes. Estes model rockets, and we put them together and shoot them up in the air and have a blast trying to find them later. This is again another Atlantis launch. It looks like at night. It's kind of hard to tell, but hey, it's colorful. It's a nice picture to have. Remember the space program. And here's another Atlantis launch. <laughs> How many of us always used to dream of being an astronaut, astronaut, wanting to go into space? That was always the dream of a lot of us. And how many of us remember those old space shows? Remember Lost in Space, Star Trek, Mr. Spock with the pointed ears, and Buck Rogers, how many remember that one? Here's another picture of Atlantis launch. I remember old good old Buck Rogers and Twiggy. How many remember that show? You can still see some of those shows on, on our TV, retro, I think it's called Retro Television Classics, something like that. This one is a space shuttle discovery um, at the Vehicle Assembly Building. This is where they, they put it all together before they get it on that big transport machine, crawler, take it to the launch pad. So uh, I hope you're enjoying some of these pictures. Uh, here's another Discovery launch. From what I understand that launch day, there's a lot of people down there to, to see it. Can you see that all right in there, my camera guy? Good, good, I know my audience will see it. So uh, here's another one on Space Shuttle Endeavor on launch pad 39A. daytime picture of it. Space Shuttle, very popular with the younger generation, but we grew up with seeing Neil Armstrong laying on the moon. And uh, here's one of the extra vehicular activity. Here's an astronaut outside of space. He's waving at us, see? He's saying, hi, how are you? 
I'm out here doing my job. Hope he's not afraid of heights. Here's one that uh, is called the Space Shuttle Endeavor and the International Space Station. Now, you know, a lot of you young people probably are up on this kind of stuff, but the older generation has seen it all. But you folks are starting to see this stuff come up. Someday one of you younger people might be uh, living in a space station up above the Earth. Here's another one, another extra extravehicular activity known as EVA. Kind of like something like doing your homework maybe, huh? But I don't think, uh, for some reason, I don't think this astronaut's doing homework. I think he's, he's doing work out there. Looks pretty high from above the Earth. And if you want to be an astronaut, one thing you can't be is afraid of heights. Here's another picture of an astronaut working out in space. Yep, can't be afraid of heights. Colorful pictures. It's, real, it's, it's well worth a trip to go down there to Huntsville, Alabama and see the Space Museum. I highly recommend it. Space Shuttle activities with ISS and Sawyer spacecraft. I think the Sawyer spacecraft was with the Russians working with the Americans. <clears throat> so like I said, you know, a lot of things took place in space there, but as you see, NASA has got them all on pictures, and, and I'm sure they got hundreds of more pictures besides these. This one here is again another extracurricular activity. So he's working out there, and then this man now now the, the astronauts can show them that they're doing their job. Now this one is the International Space Station. I'm going to try to turn it sideways and see maybe that's a better picture of it right there. Thousands of pictures they've taken. And how many remember the, what they think what they called the Hubble spacecraft? Up there, the Hubble tele, telescope, I think it was. Here's another picture of an astronaut working outside. Yeah. So you have to really want to have a desire to be an astronaut because you, uh, it's not, a, not an easy job and it's a lot of sometimes danger up there. Here's one of the Space Shuttle Endeavor with the Earth's horizon. How beautiful that picture looks. And a lot of us older generation people probably remember the Apollo pictures when they sent it back when they were going around the moon and taking pictures and showing Earth from the moon. I remember that. Here's one of the here's one of the space shuttle discovery with the cargo bay's door open. And they gotta make sure that's secure, that they don't lose their cargo and they'll be floating hundreds of miles away out of nowhere. Who knows, maybe the Martians might want to get it, take it or something. So they have to make sure that's secure. And we're getting down to some more, a few, the last few pictures of the uh, uh, space shuttle. This one is uh, Discovery approaching runway 15. Now I want you folks to take a real close look at these pictures and tell me when I'm done showing you the last three of them what the numbers are on the pictures. There's a picture of the landing. This one is the, again, the Endeavour approaching runway 15. Are you watching the uh, numbers on that? Looks like runway 15 is a popular runway down there. And here's the Endeavour on the uh, runway 15 coming down. I'll show you the car number here. And then I'll show you the flight. I think, nope, oh, had it upside down. See, you gotta pay attention. If you wanna be a good astronaut, you gotta know you're up from your down, you're left from your right. Kinda helpful. But anyways, 
Those are my NASA cards, my favorite cards. And I thought that I'd uh, take a few moments here. I hope you've enjoyed this brief video. I hope you're, you're a space buff, you like science fiction, you like all this stuff. And uh, I hope you all have a good day. And until next time, I'm your host, Alan Wegener.